when an artist dreams, it's unlike any other dream. Dreams are defined by a succession of images, thoughts, or emotions passing through the mind as a person sleeps. Yet, when an artist dreams, he or she is wide awake, experiencing emotions, designing images, and giving birth to a work of art that the world has never seen. Their canvases are windows of endless opportunities. Many artists draw inspiration from their surroundings. It gives life to their creative strands as they begin to form. For the past 14 years, Chetwin, BC has been giving artists the chance to carve their dreams. Artists come from all over the world in June and leave us with stunning sculptures. came here, we looked at the trees. I mean, wood was important. My dad had a, a little bush sawmill, and that's how he scraped out his, really a precarious living. But that's the living that, that uh, he provided for us. And uh, when we looked at a tree, like some of these trees, dad would look at them and estimate. So many trees uh, to the thousand board feet of lumber. We don't do it in board feet anymore, we do it in meters, but uh, we look at, look at a stand of spruce trees and say, hmm, two and a half trees to the thousand, that's good. So the thought was on lumber, lumber to build their cabins, lumber to build their fences, lumber to build their barns. They didn't think of anything else in the tree. Oh yes, they did, firewood. Firewood was very important, but like these green trees around us here, uh, they, that wasn't firewood, that was, that was lumberwood. And then as the community matured, we, uh, we started to think of other things. We think of, uh, is it more than just lumber in that tree? And this is how Chetwind became, or got started in, uh, in chainsaw uh, art, chainsaw sculpturing. We'd invite um, some of the best chainsaw sculptors, chainsaw artists in the world to come to Chetwind. I suppose any town could say, well, we're special too. But looking at Chetwind, I think I'm going to have to say that Chetwind's sense of, of volunteerism, because you can't put on a, a display like, like we do every year without huge participation by volunteers. It starts with the sponsors. It, it, it costs $100,000 or more to put on that, uh, that uh, competition every year. So we need sponsors. And the District of Chetwind is, is, is a major sponsor. But we need others, industrial sponsors and commercial sponsors and ordinary people sponsors. Wood plays a vital role in this town. It's ingrained everywhere you look. You see it in the economy.
it blends in perfectly with the architecture. and it enhances the well-being of this place. There are many factors behind this competition that the untrained eye may not see. The variety and caliber of the carvings, for example, is not an accident. No, it's intentional. While other competitions may have themes or guidelines of what can or can't be carved, here, it's quite the opposite. Carvers are given the chance to fantasize with their ideas and carve what they ultimately desire. Instead of just going and carving something and selling it at auction, these carvings stay in the community. And plus, we ask them to carve something that's special to them. And so we ask them to write it up and plan you get a better carving, plus they feel better about their carving. Well, Chetwin for me is, is like a dream come true. About five years ago I watched this on YouTube and Facebook and the likes, and I was just blown away by the level of the carving that was here. And I said to my daughter and my son, you know, imagine someday to, to get to that place, you know, and maybe just see the stuff. Like. So to be here now is... It's like, you know, it's just kind of dreams come true in a way. So I'm really excited to be here. I'm really excited to try to do a really good piece, you know. And um, so it means a lot. I think why Chetwind is so sought after by carvers, it's an invitation only competition. And they come here and they, they're allowed to carve what they want. So they can give us their best carving of what they, what they want to do. Plus the wood is incredibly, it's, it's just amazing old, old cedar. And I think, um, in Europe, if you get invited to Chetwind, it's, it's a really big win. Um, here, even Canadians want to come. So Chetwind's really made themselves a show that everyone wants to come to. And I think in large, we've got to thank the community and the sponsors. I've been to, uh, yeah, quite a few competitions. But I, I, it's, it's in the top. I mean, there's, there's probably like, you know, three or four competitions in the world that, that carvers consider to be the top competitions that they want to hit. In. Chetwin is definitely at the top of the list. I would say it's probably in the top three. Uh, one of the top three, I don't know, the carvers might tell you like which one they like better or not, but I, I would say that you know, Chetwin is always one that comes up in the, in the top three competitions in the world. Even though many of us can have visions, it's fair to say that only the artistically gifted make those thoughts a reality with a sense of awe and wonder. Hey, watch this guy. Hey, they said I won last year. They forgot about you already. <laughs> what do you uh, think about this lawn? What do you see? Uh, what I'm going to be doing is there will be an eagle in flight uh, coming down, attached to a little little stem coming off his leg that will be supporting him. Uh, he'll be going after a rabbit, and there will be a wolf coming after the rabbit also. He had a vision before. At first he got another tree, but it was a bit too big and had like a, a wavy surface and he needed, you know, more it to, it to be more like even and more like round.
of doing something a little bit different, combining some uh, kind of elements that I'm I typically carve by themselves and trying to create a kind of a cohesive composition. So I've got uh, an eagle skull kind of on a, a box kind of plinth holding kind of an abstract water feature and then a salmon kind of jumping out of the water feature. And then I'm going to add some kind of stylized designs onto it. This is the first piece where I've taken the log and kind of broken it down like that. Um, so that's new for me. Um, I had a, another idea for a piece, but it required a bigger log. So this was kind of my my second choice. Um, but yeah, it's it's fun because it's and I think the other thing is that I don't I don't have a helper, so it's they're they're in the manageable sized chunks now, so I can lift them around. They're getting <clears throat> lighter with each cut. So. <laughs> I find that water is a big, uh, kind of a big influencer in my life and so it's a real kind of tribute to that. <clears throat> um, yeah, all of those things have, obviously the water has something to do with water, but the eagles rely on the salmon that come up in the rivers and ocean around us. Um, yeah, so that's kind of where the influence comes from. piece uh, it's gonna be titled uh, Roots and Wings it's kind of a dedication to my father who passed uh, I was invited here last year um, and couldn't make it because uh, dad was sick uh, so he ended up passing in September so it's a dedication to him of course with my piece you know Roots and Wings I've got big soaring eagle on one side on the back side I'm doing a tree um, and then carving the roots down at the bottom. I got a nice little saying. Uh, so there's gonna be a little bit of routering uh, that I don't normally use. You know, normally it's mostly chainsaw, so I'll use the router uh, to put, put a verse down, at, down on the base of the carving. And then also I'm gonna add on, I'm gonna carve the skeleton of the tree, if you would, and then I'm gonna add on the, the little leaves. So I've got several leaves I gotta cut out and fix and put on. So yeah, yeah, so that's something that, uh, that, that I don't normally do. So if you look at Jason Emmons' carving, it's, it's a very heartfelt carving. Um, he is, what you see in that tree is how he is with his own family. So um, I think that's why he's come here a few years is because he's not only a very talented carver, but the tree that he carved was representing his father and the love that he gave to the family and the lessons he taught. So um, we're very lucky to have it. I just did the carving, um, or not a carving, but a, a clay model of it uh, back in 2012, I think. And yeah, I always just wanted to sort of make it bigger, make it life size. So, you know, and it was it was one of those things. I, I that was my plan to do at the U.S. Open years ago, um, my first international competition, um, and. I got sort of swayed by other carvers and they said, no, you've got to make it tall and you've got to do this and you've got to do that. And I was like, oh, okay, that's it. But it just didn't pull off the same, so I wanted to do it justice. Spiritual world and nature, sort of the, the link between those. Um, you know, she's going to be naked and, you know, quite sort of vulnerable, that sort of thing. Um, whereas a wolf, you know, like it's, it's signifying nature and, you know, wild and, and dangerous and that sort of thing but um, yeah that's that's kind of the, the gist doing female form is always difficult human form but female form especially uh, and I think that yeah I think you know dodging around this there's a, I've got a big pocket of right through the center of it um, so I had to put a whole new section in through her midriff and uh, that was a bit of a challenge getting that nice and tight and 
you know, the joint's all nice. What would a top three finish mean to you? Um, oh, look, it would be very nice. It means I get to come back. <laughs> Automatic invite's always nice. Um, but yeah, look, I've, I've placed second and third here, so look, it's it's tough. I mean, the, the, the guys who are here are just phenomenal. You know, I, I wouldn't want to be a judge. This one is one of, if not the biggest. There's, you know, the Husky Cup in Germany, the Uzu Cup, and there's a few big ones in the States, but I mean, I'm from Canada, so uh, yeah, this is the best one in the world, man. We're in BC, my hometown, my home province. I am doing Poseidon. Poseidon, who's gonna be fighting the Kraken. Um, last year's piece was so, grimly complicated and it was just so dark and emotionally draining that this year I wanted to have fun and uh, I did the Poseidon once in uh, once before but I wanted to kind of make some improvements on it and I just thought it was a really fun piece and think it will score well so the the lines and the balance in this piece have been the toughest so far like looking behind me you can see kind of the the, all the weight is kind of distributed onto that fin, and I'm gonna try and push it as far as I can go. And uh, and then just getting nice, clean, flowing lines, and then being able to do human proportion in amongst a, uh, a Greek god, so he's gonna be ripped and jacked. And it's it, overall, is just a pretty tough piece. Lots of movement, lots of motion. Do you ever try and keep in mind what the judges are looking for sometimes, or no? 100%, it's the only reason I'm carving that. <laughs> I mean, I've done it before and I know it, it scored well when I did it before and this year, you know, I really want to try and place high. I want to, I want to place. What would a top three finish mean to you? Uh, well, you probably see me cry and uh, it'd be probably one of the best moments of my life. I mean, all the carvers that come here are the best in the world and idols, mentors, friends and to place in amongst them would be, for me, it'd be one of the best things, best feelings of my life. I'm trying to manipulate the wood to create a charging bison, buffalo. And it's not a water buffalo, but a you know, wild buffalo from North America. So. I've been all, it's always been on my mind to do one. I've never done one before. Uh, probably wouldn't have tackled it without Liam Tromans from Vancouver Island came up. Uh, to assist me, so uh, pretty grateful for that, and uh, you know, chat with petroleums. So, yeah, how's Liam helping you out with this piece? Well, he's uh, making certain all my saws are ready to go. Uh, all the uh, pre um, the assistants are able to do are just uh, basically do sanding, and we're not at that stage yet. So he's going up and above uh, Call of Duty, and he's taking care of all the chainsaws and uh, making sure the place is nice and clean of debris and uh, making some sales himself. What do you think of the event so far? Oh cool, glad to be here. Yeah, all these great artists from around the world, it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Liam's been carving for 18 years himself, so he he's uh, uh, no he's no amateur, he's not but, uh, new to this, so it's all this, good. Uh, in July, be two years full time though, it's always like just a little bit here and there. What would a top three finish mean to you here? Are you kidding? Uh, it's since I started carving it, 
and then I came here four years ago. Um, I didn't realize the caliber of the carving, hey, so I was rather ignorant to other people's styles and what have you. But now that uh, I've been here and I've met some of the best carvers in the world, uh, yeah, it would be, well, the pinnacle of your, my career. Is, there's no doubt about that. So, so I'm, I'm, you know, I, I'm, I'd be grateful if it, it ever happens, you know, in my lifetime, so. International carvers are always a big hit at this competition, but even with many years of experience under their belt, there are several disadvantages that they have to face while carving here. Well, they're at, they're at a huge disadvantage. First of all, the time, the time zone is way different. They had to fly in, they got jet lag, and sometimes that takes two, three days. Sometimes it's a day, it depends on the person and it affects everybody differently. The other thing is, is they're using tools they've never used before. Everything's different. Even if they bring their own bars and chains, the saws don't run the same as your saw. Your saw feels different than the same model saw. Just everything feels different. They're, they're looking for tools. They're, they're uh, using different tools. Um, they're at a huge different disadvantage. I think that the European carvers are, are, uh, have to work twice as hard just to do half as nice of a, a carving because they're, it's almost like they're working with their hands tied. Some of the challenges that the international carvers have, they have different equipment. For example, our chainsaws, we have the trigger in the handle, and you hold the top handle, whereas the Irish guys were telling me last night they had to completely change their way of carving because they have the trigger up here on the top, and so they, they're used to carving with their right hand, now they have to carve with their left hand, and they've adjusted and actually prefer it. So, but those are challenges that they have, and especially the glues, they're not, they're not familiar with the glues, so I had to let them know you've got to add water for the catalyst. Just those things we've got to take care of for the international carvers. You know, like a guy coming from uh, Europe, used to carving a little harder wood, he gets into the cedar, and when the saw just dives in there, and right away you're like, whoa, <laughs> you know? So you have to adapt. I suppose just the, the initial cutting, the getting rid of the big stuff was um, kind of a little bit nerve wracking. But once we got the saws going, it, you started to see a bit of shape. Um, I suppose the time difference was the big thing. I was actually, I, I started to die at about three o'clock. Like I could feel the energy going because we'd normally be asleep. So uh, yeah, that was kind of strange, that kind of funny feeling. But uh, yeah, it's, you still don't know if you're going to, you, you know, you don't think you have enough time. So. It's like, come on, keep pushing, keep pushing. So yeah, what well, we're getting there. Yeah, we got the head today and I got all the tea in and everything, so I'm happy. Well, the story is uh, about a young boy that takes on um, the hound. And what it was, was he was, a, he was called Satanta. And he was an Irish warrior and he was kind of, at a young age, he was renowned for being uh, like a, a, a talented kind of, he's going to be a really good kid like. So the king asked him to come and uh, visit him at the castle. He wanted to talk to him and, uh, but like being any boy, he started playing hurling, which is an Irish game with sticks and a ball. Uh, a bit like hockey and stuff, but on, in a field. But uh, he started playing with his friend and so he was late getting to the castle and the hound had been left out into the courtyard. So when he got there, the hound confronted him and in a panic he hit the ball down the hound's throat and killed him. Um, but what he didn't realise was the hound was only protecting his two pups. So the king came out and Mother Nature spoke to him and said that like you need to rear these pups now. And he became the hound, Cú Cullen, and he became the guardian of the King of Ireland. And that's what the story is about. It's about a little boy becoming a man 
and uh, taking responsibility for something that he done, you know. And uh, that's it, that's the story of Coo Cullen. Yeah. It was it was intricate just getting in around the, and trying to do the back of the tongue and the, the tonsils and all that stuff. So, you know, I, I still have a bit more work to do on him, but at least I got the head fitted and I got the tail fitted. So I can see him now, I can see the hound. So um, tomorrow now I'm hoping to get the little Coo Cullen done, uh, Satanta. So if I can get him set up, then we're starting to see the whole scene then. So yeah, but so that's what it's about. <laughs> You know, you'll get some competitions that'll have cedar, but typically, uh, like here it's cedar, Malda you're looking at like oak, and in the U.S. it's a lot of white pine. Is there any advantages to working with cedar or disadvantages? Um, you know, cedar is probably, you know, that that's one of the big draws here, the size of the cedar that you get here. Um, not too many carvers get this size of wood ever to work on. So I think that's a huge draw here. Plus, uh, cedar, you really don't have to do anything to it to make it look beautiful. It's just such a beautiful wood. And it, it, you can do a bad carving in cedar and it looks good. People were sort of having a laugh at me because I started at the bottom and worked up, whereas it's mostly common to start at the top and work down. So, But I had to get that tortoise in the right place. It was going to take up the whole width of the log. So. That was the obvious place to start, and then once I'd got him, work up. So yeah, a little bit unusual. I like pieces that are um, that make you think about either the environment or nature or human rights or things like that 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 I are important to me. And um, so, but I like to have a piece that's not too serious, not too not too grim and depressing, but like has a playful nature to it as well. So the buildings appeal to the kids, you know, they get peering in the windows and, you know, they, they have a kind of whimsical magicalness to them that appeals to everyone. So it's, yeah. It's basically a giant tortoise climbing up a small slope and then there's houses, buildings, which is kind of my trademark, sort of these higgledy piggledy buildings towering up, the skyscrapers at the top working down to kind of um, expensive housing and then slums at the bottom. So it kind of represents a city and, and it's, it's representing humanity itself. So it's like humanity, a civilization that's being supported by nature. He said the tortoise is the longest living land animal and he rep the tortoise represents nature and the tortoise is looking back on the houses that are about to topple and they're all overcrowded and we are putting such a burden on nature to sustain the planet so what his real message is there is how is how are we going to survive when we are totally pushing nature to support us and to its limits International or not, each carver has his or her own style, which means every carving will require specific techniques and obstacles to overcome. They're all great. They really are. Everybody's got something that just makes their piece pop. I mean, uh, Jason Emmons, he added a bunch of leaves all over his piece. That's pretty cool. Uh, Jeff's over there working on Lady Gaga playing the piano. I mean, that's awesome. Uh, the little city on the back of the turtle, that's crazy. Taco's piece with the animals, I mean they're all great, they really are. This one here, teeter-totter. When people look at this carving, what do you want them to think? Uh, I want them to think about uh, how this world has, uh, I think, kind of changed for the worst. and with the, the Four Horsemen in Revelation, I, I think that's gonna kind of open people's eyes a little bit, at least I hope. So get people thinking about things. Everything's going crazy, a lot of wars and just, just going
school shootings, all that stuff. So I don't know. This is just what I kind of, I kind of foresee in the future. Maybe if people just open the Bible and read it a little bit. The degree of difficulty is also very much related to the design because Jason Stoner's work, for example, he literally cut a few pieces off it, and then he had four horsemen and four horses twirled around one central theme. That's extremely difficult to pull off, and he did. There's so many pieces. I got the bow, I got the, the sword, and then I got I have scales made, I gotta fit them in. And the scales are gonna kinda, they're just gonna get in the way of the whole movement of the horse and rider, so. But I gotta have it, so it's, it's just, I don't know. It's, I'm tired, <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it, by burning it does actually give like some highlights and shadow effects and uh, darkens the horse, that's the black horse and the rider. Uh, and in just deeper areas of the sculpture, it just gets in there and just makes it look better. I'll go back over tomorrow and sand it. But yeah, it's basically for that, that shadow effect. I enjoy coming down, seeing it from the very start when they get their logs and just watching how it changes and try and guess what it's going to be and, and all that stuff and it's just amazing how it changes over a matter of hours. It's amazing how it changes and uh, it's just uh, incredible what they can do with wood. I wanted to go with more of a nature theme this year and uh, eagles I guess have always uh, enjoyed carving them. and. Uh, Got the wolf, and more or less what it is is uh, the eagle and the wolf are both going after that rabbit, and uh, they're both pretty much botching their, their hunt because they're not paying attention to, to each other. When people look at this carving, what do you want them to think? Uh, I'd like them to feel the you know the emotion of the eagle with the uh, outstretched wings. Um, I guess focus of the wolf, and then you got the uh, poor little bunny there that he's kind of helpless. Getting to the final stages now. What I did was I uh, wanted to add a little bit of height to it, so I ended up cutting it off, catching a higher piece, and then it was easier to work on, you know, on the ground rather than doing everything overhead. But, uh, it's coming together. Final stages. This year, the spectators' attention seems to be fixed on Takeo Hayashi, Ramondos Ustraves, and Jeff Samudowski. Does this mean they'll walk away with the top spot? Maybe, maybe not. I, I like the hippo, and uh, even though my buddy here uh, carved the moose last year I bought off of him, I still have to go with the hippo this year. What do you like about it? I just like it's different. It's completely different from what we've seen up here. We don't see a lot of that uh, African type things. You know, it's all eagles, bears, and it's all that kind of stuff. So that's just unique this year, so that's why I'm voting for it this year. What are you carving? Uh, yeah. I got a uh, hippo and a lion. Yeah. Why? Uh, my, my son, favorite animal. <laughs> What's your favorite animal? Yeah, same. <laughs> yeah, hippo and lion. Is this uh, difficult? Is it hard? Uh, yeah. It's a bit 
this card for me. Yeah. Uh, faces or uh, <laughs> very di different type. something to do, eh? Kas geresnis, ar Da Vinci's, ar Van Gogh's, ar Salvador's Dalí, ar Picasso. Yeah, he says, no, it's just, all of them are so amazing that it's impossible to even compare. It's the same if you would compare like Salvador Dalí, Da Vinci, Van Gogh, all of them, it's impossible to compare. So it's the same because all the styles are different and all of the works are just amazing. What do you want people to think when you play with your hair? Um, uh, he would like them to think that, oh, it's going to be a nice swing for us, you know, yeah. <laughs> Singai apskaičiuot visą realio įdėjimą. To count everything right, how the eagle is gonna move. Yes. How important is it to have your daughter here with you? Ata mūsų, mūsų auduktorės, ne aš turiu kodėl. Jo. Yes. Nes man jį labai daug padėjo ir Patinga kaip perdėja, nes man būna dažnai sukų suprasti organizacinius dalykus, nes mano anglo kalba yra labai sukla. He says, yes, she helped me a lot, especially as a translator, because I don't speak English well and it's hard to understand all the, you know, rules and everything, so she helped me a lot with it. Dusky, um, he's an exceptional carver from the States, but his story in particular was that he told me he realized how judgmental he was when he had always thought Lady Gaga was just a freak of nature and just silly and disregarded her. And then all of a sudden he heard an interview by Howard Stern and he learned that she's classically trained. She's had incredible history of abuse and, and difficulty. Her family have struggled and she is in fact an amazing person and her voice is like an angel. And suddenly he learned that the person he had just disregarded is exceptional. And then he started to look more into her history and he chose to do Lady Gaga because he wanted to show what he felt about her. 
Well, uh, I was thinking long and hard for the last bunch of months of what I could do that no one's ever done or seen before up at Chetwind. And uh, I came up with, uh, I was listening to Howard Stern and I was listening to uh, Lady Gaga in, 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 uh, in studio. And she just played some of the most raw, best uh, piano I've ever heard. And uh, so I said, that's what I'm gonna try to do. So I'm gonna actually try to carve Lady Gaga playing a piano. It's an important, almost confession of, she changed me. And so he wanted to honor her in a way by having her check wind and saying, wow, she's exceptional. She's not someone who just messes around in fancy outfits. She's an educated person to be respected. A uh, hum human figure is very difficult to capture someone and make it look like somebody in particular, and then to make it in her interact with the piano, her feet on the on the foot pegs, you know, uh, on, on the foot pedals, I'm sorry, and uh, and then their hands on the keys, and to have her look like she's singing all in one. So the whole thing is gonna be quite the challenge. Oh heck, everybody wants to be in the top three, but just to be here, I'm happy. If I could pull it off and have it look somewhat like a woman, even Gaga, that would be great. As long as it doesn't look like Harmon Munster, I think I've done my job. Time has finally run out, and the judges have had time to talk and make their rounds through the carvings. It's time to find out who will win the Carver's Choice Award, the People's Choice Award, and the top three spots for this year's competition. So Carver's Choice wins $500 and People's Choice wins 1000 So this year's People's Choice goes to lock number 12, Ryan Cook. Yeah. Okay, this year's Carver's Choice, this has happened twice this year and last year, there's always been a tie. So this year they had to break the tie, and I would like to give the Carver's Choice to Dan Cordell. So this year, third place is sponsored by Kanuma Cole, so I would like Mark to come up from Kanuma Cole to present this. Gives me great pleasure to welcome Takeo Hohashi, third place. went to Takeo Hayashi from Japan who produced as usual one of the most happiest carvings of a lovely hippo and rhino with the arms intertwined with the meerkats in front with their arms intertwined and the art fark behind hiding and, and sleeping and feeling secure. Um, the detail in his carvings I mean he's a master and you see him carve and he's a wizard he's an absolute wizard so I feel our top three are exceptional um, he also said the story behind it is he wants happiness and he wants people to look at his carvings and feel good. And that's exactly what you do. Second place, if I could have 
Black Diamond Group, Craig Carter, to come up to present the resort award. Ready, gentlemen? And this year's lucky recipient is Chad Danzig. The number two carving this year is by Chad Danzig and he did an eagle and it's called Focus and that eagle is spectacular. If the, the photograph of it actually at night someone took a photo and it looked like a real eagle swooping in. The craftsmanship is superb. The accuracy to the eagle and the bunny and the wolf is incredible and everything Chad does is very detailed and very professional. And we're really happy with the piece, and I'm hoping he's happy that he plays second. So this year's winner of the 2008 Carving Championship is Jeff Samandowski. He won for Lady Gaga on the piano. Join him. The uniqueness, the story behind it, the way he crafted it, he gained the first, he's the champion this year, he won first place. Um, everything about that piece is unique. I could, I could nitpick that thing all day, but we had 35 hours and, or something like that, and uh, I was just happy to get it to the level of completion that we did. I started off wanting to do exactly what I did, and I, I completed it, so I'm happy. The Chetwin International Chainsaw Carving Championship has been a staple in this community for 14 years now and has left us with about 190 carvings to display around town. We've also had the pleasure of presenting them as gifts to our neighboring communities. Although, more importantly, this competition has left us with an excuse for people around the world to come and explore a town full of dreams come true.